Okay, so in this video we will be looking at an alternative way in calculating the gradient whilst also looking at the gradient and discovering it can help us achieve an angle as well. Okay, I want you to consider the straight line passing through two points. Okay, I've called the first point x1, y1 and the second point x2, y2. So if you look at my line there, x1, y1, x2, y2, okay, well you can see the distance along the horizontal, okay, that would be a difference in the x coordinates of both the coordinates there, so that would be x2 minus x1, and the distance between the two points vertically would be the difference in the y coordinates, y2 minus y1. Now you can also see that we're going to get an angle in here if we create this triangle, right angle triangle, and we're going to call this angle theta. Okay, now theta is a Greek letter. Okay, and it is often used to stand for an angle. Throughout the higher course, you will see theta get used very often. Okay, so nine times out of ten, it stands for an angle. Okay, it's most commonly used for an angle. If we extend this line until it crosses the x axis, okay, so if I just extended this line down till it crossed the x axis, okay. It makes an angle theta with the x-axis also. Okay, it gives me the exact same angle there. Okay, because we didn't change the direction this line was moving in, we just extended it so the gradient remained the same. So I also get an angle theta here. So we know this because of the f angle property. Okay, now you might know that as corresponding angles, but you can see we have like an upside down f angle there so this angle theta is the exact same size as this angle theta here okay so it's an f angle property right if we consider back to the triangle we've created okay so we're looking at this diagram inside here then if i am considering where theta is then i know two lengths okay i know that this length here across from it opposite it is the length of y2 minus y1 okay so therefore I'm going to label that the opposite side. And I know this length x2 minus x1, okay, that is adjacent to the angle theta there. Okay, so using our right angle trigonometry, okay, so katoa, then relative to the angle theta, we can label the vertical side as opposite, which is what we've done there, and the horizontal side as the adjacent there. Okay, now from this, if you go back to Sokatoa, when you know the opposite and you know the adjacent, then we are using tan. Okay, so tan of any angle A is always opposite over adjacent in a right angle triangle. Now, because we know the lengths of opposite and adjacent, okay, we can change this to look like this. So I'm not using A, I'm using the angle theta. Okay, now theta, okay, opposite was y2 minus y1, so that goes on the numerator, x2 minus x1 was my adjacent, which goes in the denominator. So tan theta equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now this may look familiar to you, and it should by now, because the gradient that we normally calculate using two points, the gradient m, so of any line, would be this formula here. So m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, that's, how, that's the formula for the gradient that we've always known from National 5 as well. So that's what I've got on my right hand side of this equation here, so I'm going to substitute that for the letter M. Okay, and we get this unique formula that the gradient M equals tan of the angle theta. Okay, so that's the formula we'll be using in today's lesson. Okay, it's a very powerful formula. So M equals tan theta, where theta is the angle between the line and the positive direction of the x axis. Now, when we see positive direction of the x-axis, we mean if we start on the x-axis, we would go round till we hit the line in an anti-clockwise fashion. That's what we mean by going round in a positive direction here. Okay, we're not starting here and going round that way. We're always going anti-clockwise. Okay, so that's going to be our formula we're going to use today. So, this is actually a very powerful formula because it can be used in two ways. Okay, so the first way is if the angle theta between a line and the positive direction of the x-axis is known, then we can use that to work out the gradient. Okay, we would use the fact that if we knew what theta was, we would work out what tan of the angle was, and we would get the answer which would be our gradient there. Okay, as long as the angle met the criteria that it was the angle from the positive 
direction from the x-axis here. Okay. The second way this uh, formula can be used is if we know the gradient, then what we can do is we can use that to help us achieve what the angle theta was. Okay. Again, remember, we need to find the angle theta, which was between the line in the positive direction of the x-axis when we use this formula. Okay, so we'll be looking at a couple examples today. We'll look at example one, which is when we know the angle, how can we work out the gradient? We'll look at a few examples where if we can work out the gradient, how can we get the angle that's been asked for us in the question? Okay, so let's look at those examples just now. So first example, we're going to calculate the gradient of the straight line shown in the diagram below. Okay, now you can see I've not been given any coordinates. So the only way I'll be able to work out this gradient is by using the angle given to me in this question here. The good news for us is that we have given the correct angle. We're given the angle from the positive x direction there, which is 32. OK, if I was given this angle on this side, I would have to use that angle to help me get this angle here by using the straight line property. But it's this one here I've been given, which is good. So the very first thing we do is we write down our formula. So it's going to be m equals tan theta. That's our starting off point. Theta is the angle used, so theta is going to be 32. So I'm going to substitute that in there. And now it's just a calculator exercise. You put tan 32 in your calculator. You get 0.6248. And if we round to two decimal places, we would get the answer m equals 0.62. So that line there has a gradient of 0.62 which we got just by using the angle there. Okay, so they can be quick examples. Okay, and we need a calculator to help us achieve this. Right, we're going to look at working out how, if we were given a gradient, how could that help us achieve what the angle was? Okay, so we're going to look at two examples very similar to each other, but there will be a difference by the solution. So we're going to find the angle that the line joining P, which is negative 2, 2, negative 2, negative 2, apologies, and Q, which is 1, 7, makes with the positive direction of the x-axis. So you can see here, I don't know what my gradient is. I need to work out what an angle is, but I can use these two coordinates to obtain what the gradient was for that line first. So I'm going to do that first. So as you can see, down the left-hand side of my work in here, Okay, I've labelled my P coordinate x1, y1, my Q is x2, y2, and I'm going to use the gradient formula that we knew and that we've been using to help me get the gradient for this. So it's going to be y2 minus y1, so that's 7, take away negative 2, over x2 minus x1, so that's going to be 1, take away negative 2. Now remember, when two negatives are next to each other, they become plus. So it's 7 plus 2, which is 9. 1 plus 2 gives me 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So the gradient of the line P to Q is of size 3. Okay, we've got a gradient of 3. Now I've been asked to find what the angle was. So if I drew what this would look like as a plot, this is the angle it would make here. Okay, so that's the theta angle that is I'm asked for in my question. So using m equals tan theta. Okay, well I know my m is now 3. So it's going to be tan theta equals 3. So I've got tan theta equals 3 there. Now, Remembering we want to work out what the angle theta is, not what tan of the angle is. Okay, so we need to undo this tan. How we undo a tan is we do the tan inverse. So theta equals the tan inverse of 3, which would give us 71.5650, dot, dot, dot. There's more there. And if we round to one decimal place, which is fine for an angle when we're in degrees, then 71.6 degrees gets us our angle there. Okay, so this line made an angle of 71.6 degrees to the positive x direction from the x-axis. Okay, so it's the angle from the x-axis going round anticlockwise till it hits our line there. Okay, let's look at a second example very similar to this. So we're going to find the angle that the line joining k, which is negative 1, 3, and l, which is 2, negative 3, makes with the positive direction of the x-axis. So the question is very, very similar. We have got different coordinates, but the same principles apply. So in order to do this and work out the angle, we need the gradient first. So I'm going to work out using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I've labelled my k as x1, y1, my l as x2, y2. So we always do that. We work out the gradient. So it'll be negative 3, take away 3. That's y2 minus y1 on the top. It'll be 2, take away negative 1 on the denominator. That's x2 minus x1. 
Remember, these two negatives change that to a plus. So negative 3 taken away 3 is 6. Negative 6. 2 plus 1 would give me 3. So I get negative 6 divided by 3, which is negative 2. So my gradient for this line is a negative gradient, and it's of size 2. I was asked to find the angle. So using this formula we've got here, m equals tan theta, I'm going to substitute m for negative 2. So I'm going to get tan theta equals negative 2. What we done last time to get the angle theta is we do the tan inverse. So we do the tan inverse of negative 2. And this is where we get a problem because the calculator gives us the answer of negative 63.4349. Now remember we are asked to find an angle here. There's no such thing as a negative size of an angle. Okay, so we need to use the fact that we got a negative from our calculator to see what does this really mean for our angle theta. If we plot this, that's what my plot would look like on the left hand side, k going to l. That would be a negative slope, which is correct, we got a negative 2 answer. And you can see that my angle from the positive x direction theta here, it would actually be obtuse, it would be bigger than 90 degrees. Okay. So when we plot the points, we notice that the angle the line makes with the positive x direction of the x-axis is indeed obtuse. Okay. So if we recall from National 5, when we were solving trig equations, and the cast diagram helped us with that, obtuse would mean it would be bigger than 90. So we're actually in this quadrant here. Okay. That means if we knew what the acute angle was, then we could use the fact that it would be 180 take away what our answer was and that would get us the obtuse angle. So that's what we need to remember for these type of questions here. So when we have a negative gradient, it's always going to be an obtuse angle we're finding here. So we're going to have to work out what the acute angle would be and then subtract it from 180 to get what the obtuse angle is. Okay, so let's work out what my angle A is, which would be the acute angle first. So. If we get back to where our question was, we were solving tan theta equals negative 2. Now because we know that was going to give us an, a negative gradient, which means our angle would be obtuse, we want to work out what the acute angle would be. So what we do is we ignore the negative and we want to find the acute angle A. So we drop the negative, so A would equal the tan inverse of 2. Okay, That would give me the answer 63.4349. And because A would equal 63.4 degrees, if we rounded it to one decimal place, theta, the angle we want, the obtuse angle, we would take off from 180, which would be 116.6 degrees. Okay, again, I'll recap why we have to do that. Our acute angle would be in here. We know from this diagram we're getting an obtuse angle, so therefore we would be in this quadrant here, 180, take away our acute angle A. So because I worked out A was 63.4, I would do 180 minus that angle to give me 116.6. Okay, so there's two examples on when using two coordinates to get us a gradient to then find as an angle would work. One if it was a positive gradient and one if it was a negative gradient. Okay, we can also be asked to find a certain angle that would not relate to our formula initially. Okay, so this would be more of a problem solving question. So, find the size of angle theta shown in the diagram here, when we know the gradient from this question is m equals 5. So we know the gradient is 5. So, if I extend my line till it touches the x-axis, then the positive angle from the x-direction would actually be this angle here. Okay, now I've labelled that A, we would normally label that theta, but I can't label this one theta this time because theta is already in my question, it's a different angle it's talking about. So if I use m equals tan theta, it will actually get me this angle inside here. Okay, so I'm going to do that first. So m equals tan theta, okay, I've changed that to m equals tan A. Since m is 5, tan A would equal 5, okay. And if I do the tan inverse of 5, I'm going to get 78.6900, dot, dot, dot. And if I rounded that, I'd get 78.7. So the angle inside here would be 78.7. So if I edit my diagram and swap that for 78.7, which is what I found, I might also notice, and I should notice, that this theta angle here would be the same as the angle inside here. So this is also the size theta. Okay, they're vertically opposite each other. 
Okay, we should remember that from previous years. I can then use the fact that in a triangle I've got 180 degrees in total. So if I do 180, subtract this 90 and subtract this 78.7, I am left with 11.3 degrees. An alternative way to do it, you could add these two angles first. So 90 plus 78.7, that give me 168.7, which I've done here. 180, take away what I know, 168.7, would leave me with 11.3, and that's what the angle theta is in there. Okay, so that's more of a problem solving based question, but again, using the formula to get the angle we can from that to help us work out the theta angle in our question. Okay, thank you.